Fun in combat is one of those things that I was really nervous about when I first started DMing. So what I thought I'd do is go through just a few tips on what I like to do to keep combat sessions interesting. And maybe you can use some of these in your own games as well. How to describe combat in a way that was interesting without going overboard. Um, took me a little while to find a balance on that and there's a few things that I like to do. The general rules for description apply. You want to make use of your five senses. So what do you see? Well, you see the sword swinging through the air. Um, perhaps you see the sword knocking something off the wall or slashing through maybe a thin beam, slashing maybe the tip off the bottom of a tapestry, something like that. Um, what do you hear? Well, you hear the arrows whistling through the air. You hear the grunt of effort as the ogre lifts its enormous weapon and brings it down upon you. Smell? Um, you can get pretty gross with this one. You can smell blood in the air. You can smell the guts of the creature. I'll leave that one to your imagination a little bit. As I will taste. Now you can taste the blood in your mouth after a particularly vicious strike, but maybe if something horrible goes flying, maybe you can taste that as well. Again, I'll leave that to you. Um, touch is a good one as well, so not just maybe what the weapon feels like in your hands, but you can feel the sweat dripping down your face. You can feel the sturdy rock against your feet, or if you're fighting in difficult terrain, maybe the mud gives way and your leg slips back a little bit. I would temper your description slightly based on audience. So for example, if this is the first game that you're playing with your nine-year-old niece, this is not the best time to talk about how the axe flies upwards through the man's crotch into his guts and explode his organs onto the ground as he screams in agony. The thing I have just described is about to happen. Please skip ahead 15 seconds if you do not wish to see it. Maybe just temper that one a little bit, although that being said, kids love violence, so give them a little bit, come on. As I make use of description, I wouldn't necessarily do this for every swing, because particularly in a big fight, that can take quite a while. But I would definitely use this for cool moments. Say the moment that the tide of the battle is turning. The felling of this enemy now means that your party has a chance. Or this is the death of the big boss. Uh, you can do a description yourself. You can talk in great detail about the death. Or you could take a leaf out of Critical Role's book and you could do something similar to the very famous... How do you want to do this? How do you want to do this? <laughs> Don't have to use those words. You can come up with your own. I like to say something like, how does it die? Just give your players the chance then to describe a little bit of the scenery and how their character does whatever they do to this human, orc, dragon, whatever you have to be fighting. Um, particularly if this is a big enemy or if they've got some kind of personal vendetta, this will really allow them to close that off and get some kind of finality on that conflict. And I just watch it leave my finger and take an impossible spiraling trajectory through the air and he's so preoccupied with that, that charming dwarf woman with the stubble and it takes him in the back of the head and it just starts to burn through the back of his skull and eat away through the back of his head and burn through his eyes. Another thing that I like to do is consider what it was that caused a miss. Um, if your player or another um, NPC combatant rolls an attack roll and they don't hit. Why was that? So, again, you could just say, you miss. But in terms of the rules of the game, there are particular reasons why a miss at a certain level would have been a miss. So you could talk about, if, it's an, if, it, if they rolled less than a 10, if their total is less than a 10, that's going to be a clear miss. The, the shot just goes wide completely. If it's somewhere between 10 and the character's dexterity modifier, so say their dex modifier is a 2, somewhere between 10 and 2, technically that's a dodge, because that character, you would have hit them if they hadn't had that dexterity modifier. The next thing I like to think about is armor. So say they've got an armor that gives them an extra plus 2 AC on top of that dexterity modifier. If your attack was a 13 or a 14, then your attack would actually hit, but be stopped by the armor either deflected by a plate or maybe just softened by the leather, just enough so that it doesn't do damage. Lastly then, on top of all of those things, would be some kind of magical defense. Let's say that all these things are applied to a wizard, and the wizard has an armor class of 16 due to magical properties. If the player rolled a 15, then it's got past the dexterity, it's got past the armor, 
what's left is the magical defense. So you can then talk about how um, the magical energies actually come and direct the sword to one side, or the arrow nearly hits but then just stops in midair and falls. Something like that. And this will make, not only make your combat feel that much more realistic, but it actually feeds into the rules of the game. The players will know, okay, I actually survived that because of my dexterity, because of my armor, because of the shield spell that I cast. If it's an enemy doing something similar, then they will know, oh, well, he's got, she's got this kind of defense. We need to factor that into our attacks. And it just grounds the game in the rules a little bit, which I think is kind of important too. With D&D, the rules are so abstract that any opportunity you've got to actually say, now hang on, this is what this rule means, that can really help to bring it alive. Something else you need to think about is making sure that your encounters are dynamic and interesting. And you can do that in a couple of ways. The first thing you can do, the first thing you can do is you can make use of the environment. So think about where the combat is happening. If it's just happening in a room or just in a cave, what could be in the room or be in the cave? An easy thing to think about would be the inclusion of lava or water into this scenario. What would that change if there was a river flowing through the middle of this cave? If there was lava? If lava doesn't quite fit with the location that you're thinking about, there could be a forge or a smelter there, a big hot object that could be used in combat by a creative player or a creative NPC. Let there be obstacles that can provide cover, so tables, stalactites and stalagmites, if you know which way around they go. Big boulders and rocks, holes, ditches, things like that. And consider the fact that the rules of the game do provide armor class and hit point stats for objects. Everything from a small box or a barrel all the way up to a cart or a wagon. So think about how those things might get destroyed as combat goes on. If a fireball goes off, it's probably going to take out a lot of the wooden barrels and tables that your party were using as cover, for example. You can also make use of these things to change the layout of the battlefield in terms of the enemies that your players are fighting. So, say for example, a door bursts open and three more city guard come in. You can use this as well to balance encounters somewhat, so if you think that an encounter is becoming a little too easy or a little too difficult, you could have some enemies retreat to gather help. But actually what they're doing in that short period is making the fight with whoever's left in the room easier. Or more reinforcements could enter the room and strengthen the enemy if you think your players are stomping over them. And you kind of want this to be a bit more of a climactic battle. The other thing to think about, and this is a bit controversial, is the idea of the critical. So a critical hit is a natural 20 on a d20. A critical miss is a natural 1 on a d20. In the rules, there's not actually any special effects that occur for these, aside from the fact that you double your dice for an attack if you roll a natural 20. I think that it can be interesting to add certain additional effects to these. I wouldn't necessarily do it for every roll, because then the players come to expect it, and the last thing you want to do is be predictable. But if you get into a situation where a particular effect would be cool or interesting, Go for it. The traditional one on a natural roll is a disarm. So say, if I roll a natural 20 against you, I knock your sword out of your hand. If you roll, um, if I roll a natural 1, I fumble and I drop my own sword. That's a pretty easy one to do, and then you can have the player spend an action next turn to pick up their sword. That then gives them a bit of a strategic decision to make. So I did this to a player once, uh, it was a fighter who dropped his great sword. And then he was forced to, because there was a massive ogre in front of him, he was forced to actually fall back and rely on his, um, I think he used a dagger for the rest of the fight, until he could get close enough to pick the sword up and carry on the combat. And that was interesting, that added an extra layer of sort of dynamic tactical combat. The reason I say don't do this every time is because it can lead to a situation where a bad roll turns from something that was a little bit unlucky to something that actually gets a player killed. And while that's interesting, again, you don't want to necessarily be responsible for that every time unless you're running a really lethal, brutal game. There are other things that you could do to make your criticals interesting. I'm going to link a, link a web page um, in the description below. Uh, it's from a website called Grow Up and Game, and there's a table there of different roles that you can make based on whether your players are using a spell, ranged weapon, or a melee weapon. Uh, so that's worth reading if you're trying to spice up your combat a little bit more with your critical effects. But I'd like to end this video in a slightly different way, and I'd like to end it by asking a question to you. So, in a combat encounter, 
For a lot of creatures, particularly hungry undead for example, or a particularly vicious enemy that you've been fighting for a long time, it would make a lot of sense for that enemy to finish off completely a downed player character before moving on to fighting the next one. But to me, that feels like it might be quite unfair in terms of combat because it would be very easy just to have all of your uh, enemy combatants dogpile one PC, kill them, move on to the next one, kill them. So how do you balance that? What do you do to make sure that that's run in a fair manner without it seeming too much like you're trying to just help the players out and stop them from losing? I'm interested to know your responses to that, so please leave me a comment if you have anything to add to that discussion. Any other questions you've got for me or anyone else, drop them in the, com in the comments as well, why not? If you enjoyed this video, a like would really help me out to let me know what you enjoyed. And if you'd like to see more D&D content coming up, please do hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, until next time, I'll see you later.